For a time, being all-wheel drive was just about going well off-road, until the 1980s where things started to change a bunch during the Group B Rally era and suddenly we saw a whole host of performance cars getting all-wheel drive. So today we're going to look at a bunch of all-wheel drive cars that are incredibly fast for under £20,000. Let's get straight into it, hit the like button if you like this kind of content, subscribe if you're new, without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> After the Impreza lost a bit of its flair by moving to being a hatchback, fans of the car felt a little bit lost at sea. This car then turned up in the early 2010s to try to bring back what was lost, and though I do think it's a cool car with great performance, it never quite captured people like the old Imprezas did. That said, the WRX STI is still a rapid all-wheel drive car, thanks to its 25 liter turbocharged Boxer 4 engine, which makes 295 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5 seconds. This was in fact the last Scooby to host that engine, which was never known for its reliability, as head gasket and ringland failure and crank oil starvation were all common issues. But ignoring those for a moment, I do think this is a cool car with an interesting shape that definitely provides a more modern flavour to the Impreza STI. Maybe with greater focus on being a tuner car than a rally car, but still insane equipment to make it genuinely very performant. These start at around £11,000 and at our 20k limit we're getting yourself a 2017 model with 45,000 miles on the clock. It's an incredibly popular car, possibly too popular, but for good reason. The VW Gold Golf R in Mark 7 and Mark 7.5 spec is a properly fast hot hatch, with its 2 litre turbocharged in 94 engine making 295 brake horsepower, which would get to 60 in 4.7 seconds. The R has always been a step from the GTI, not so much in terms of fun, but just out and out performance. In a world where we're in a battle for hyper hatches, the R is VW's main entrant. Some will tell you the GTI is all you need out on the road, and they're probably right, but these do have their own allure to them. I would say they are less attractive now than the older Gen R30 which are far rarer and more sought after, particularly the Mark IV Golf R32, but you can't deny the performance of these things. They run around 10k at the bottom end, and double that gets you a 2018 model with 40,000 miles on the clock. Main problems include carbon buildup and water pump failure, though DSG and Haldex problems have also been known. I had an amazing time driving the F83 BMW M4 a couple of years ago. It was an incredibly fast car with a lovely interior, great looks, and some rear wheel drive fun. But from what I've heard, you can actually go faster in a remap all-wheel drive 435D for a fraction of the cost, considering stock these put out 308 brake horsepower from their 3 litre twin turbocharged N96 engines, meaning they do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, just 0.4 seconds slower than the M4. A stage 1 remap on these can take the power up to 400 brake horsepower and 570 pound feet of torque, which would be likely enough to smoke an M4, particularly with those torque figures. And then you can still benefit from putting all the M performance fiddly bits on one of these to get them looking a little bit more aggressive, and the interior Interior's main is pretty similar to that you'll find in the M4 as well. So basically what I'm saying is if you want a diesel M4, get this. These are listed anywhere from around £10,500 nowadays, with 20k getting you a 2017 model with 40,000 miles on the clock. EGR valves and coolers and steering racks were the initial issues with these and had recalls as a result. I can't believe it took forward three generations to build a Focus RS that was all-wheel drive, considering the genesis of this car has always been a rally sport fast forward. Think about the Escort RS Cosworth all-wheel wheel drive, the RS200 all wheel drive, so why three generations to make a Focus RS that was the same? Anyway, less ranting, the Mark III Focus RS will likely be the last ever Focus RS, with its 2.3 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine, which makes 345 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds. That engine is the same one you'll find in the EcoBoost example of the Mustang, which of course most people ignore for the sake of that V8. Not the same sentiment with this though of course, however this engine was known for head gasket failure in some instances, which isn't great news. There were other complaints about build quality, but that comes with the territory of Ford building a relatively cheap performance car. Outside of that though, it is cresting hyper hatch territory, given it's only slightly slower than the A45 AMG. To buy one, you'll need to spend around our 20k limit at the bottom end though, sadly, making it the most expensive car on the list. I mentioned the A45 AMG, which everyone knows is an incredibly fast hot hatch, and it's kind of the main car you think of when you think of hyper hatches. We're on the same platform with the same engine, the same interior, same same overall package but without a hatchback roof and instead a four-door coupe set of stylings is this, the CLA45 AMG. That means it has a 2 litre twin scroll turbocharged in 94 engine which makes 354 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Now this car I would say is actually better looking than the A45 AMG overall. It's less practical given the loss of the hatchback but I like to think of it as a baby C63 AMG. If anything it's actually more aggressively styled than many other AMGs given the A45 was so aggressive 
looking. Although the interiors on these are great looking, I would remind you to question the build quality, which I personally found to be a little bit underwhelming. 13k is enough to get into one of these, and 20k gets you a 2014 model with 50,000 miles on the clock. Generally, these have been okay on reliability, but build quality has meant some rattle and squeak on the interior, and the ride and gearbox have both been called annoying by some owners. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below. Do you prefer cars that are all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, or rear-wheel drive? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. This might be my favorite car on the list, the Audi RS4 Avant, a properly fast super estate, which I would absolutely have over the most recent generation. It was a simpler time in the early 2010s, which is why you could smash a naturally aspirated 4.2 litre V8 into this car, which makes 443 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Not bad for a granddad car, eh? This is the B8 RS4, or the third generation to hit the road, and it's a major step up over its S4 younger sibling. It's wider all in with the flared arches being a telltale sign, and the more pointy stylings are also a dead giveaway. For the wrong person, this is a sleeper, and for the right person, this is a properly exotic estate, which gets you into something like the new RS6 GT for a fraction of the price. In fact, £16,500 minimum you need to spend to get into one of these, and 20k will get you a 2014 model with 100k on it. Lots of owners have had trouble with these timely maintenance and some preventative modifications seem to have been the name of the game, and gearboxes have been the biggest, most expensive issue. Possibly the biggest surprise on this list is this, the Volvo V60 or S60 T8, which is actually ridiculously quick. It really shouldn't be a surprise at this point though, Volvo have always made some of the most dastardly sleeper cars out there, and this one comes with a 2 litre twin charged inline 4 engine that also utilises electric power to produce a combined 448 brake horsepower, and I promise, this is the last car on the list that has a 4.5 second 0 to 60 time. Now twin charged means turbos and supercharged, but actually in 2022, Volvo removed the supercharger and seemed to have made the electric motor more relevant, bringing the power up to 455 brake horsepower combined instead. On the one hand, great, but on the other, it's pretty cool to own a twin charge car that doesn't have a terrible reliability record like some of the VWs of the late O's and early 10s. Either way, though, I think that both the S and V60 are great looking cars, properly muscular with a simple but effective interior, well worth considering for anyone after something sensible and ridiculously fast. They start at around £17,000, with 20k being enough for a 2020 model that's done around 90,000 miles. Considering the Scooby was the least quick car on this list, it has been absolutely dominated by one of its main but slightly older rivals, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo X, which in 330 spec comes with a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine, making 324 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.3 seconds, 0.7 seconds faster than the WRX STI. The Evo 10 has never been my personal favourite generation as I'm a sucker for rallying, and it's the rallying Evos that really capture my imagination the most, but that's not to say that this isn't a great looking, great sounding, and great performing car. I love how so many modifications look great on it too, which for me is super important for any Japanese performance car. It is a shame that this was the final Evo, but at least it came around at the same time as the Impreza became a hot hatch, as it kind of capped off an era of some great Japanese super saloons. The Evo 10 will cost you around £17,000 at the bottom end, and 20 k will get you into a 2010 model that's done around 45,000 miles. The stock clutch master cylinder is the key common problem on these, as the stock one is plastic and known to be very weak. We've had a few cars on this list that can actually handle a good amount of people and luggage, and we've got another one taking second on this list, the first generation Porsche Panamera Turbo, which is a ridiculously fast estate, though it's actually listed as a hatchback due to that more sloping roofline. That speed is thanks to its 4.8 litre twin turbocharged VA engine, which makes 493 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.1 seconds, crazy power out of one of the two oldest cars on this list. This is a great car for the money, considering compared to the Turbo S it didn't really miss out on too much, mainly the larger turbos and some enhancements to the engine internals. The focus with these is to build a car with 911 handling dynamics matched with greater practicality, and though 100% the newer generations are much better looking, these definitely do the job in the right spec when well looked after, and the performance speaks for itself. 17 grand will get you one of these, and for 20k you'll be looking at a 2010 model with 90,000 miles on it. They are known for oil and coolant leaks, and the rear spoiler is known to fail. A quick reminder, I organise many of my lists from slowest to faster from 0 to 60 to try to reduce bias on my side. For that reason, my least favourite car on the list is also taking the top spot. It's not that I don't like the Model 3 performance, it's just not for me, though I have been in one and they are diabolically quick. That's thanks to their two electric motors which put out a combined 449 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 3.1 seconds, a whole second faster than the Panamera. Absurd performance. These have been criticised for one main reason though, their build quality 
quality. A friend of mine has a brand new Model 3 which has had a crazy number of small annoying issues in its first few years of ownership which attest to this. On the positive however, it is still the kind of car that a techie would love and ridiculously quick. It's not the best handling car of all time but all the fun effectively comes from the shunt it gives you from a standstill. They start at around £19,000 and 20k will get you into a 2019 model with around 85,000 miles on the clock. And so there you have it, a bunch of very fast all-wheel drive cars for under £20,000. I've got some other fast all-wheel drive cars that are slightly cheaper on this list right here. Subscribe as well down here. Massive thanks to the Patreon for support and you guys are well for watching. I'll see you in the next one.